What's up guys? Welcome back to another trout episode. Thank you for joining me again. If you guys watched yesterday's video where Caroline and Andrew and Hunter tackled a little bit bigger water, you would have noticed that they had some bigger rods, some bigger baits, right? So today we're gonna dive into that a little bit deeper and we're gonna talk about a little bit bigger water trout. Exactly. Right, we started the first couple episodes this week on small stream fishing, but when we get a little bit bigger water, and this is kind of like what we grew up doing, right? There's nothing like full-size baits, full-size gear for these trout. So we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper. We're gonna pick Callan's brain a little bit on some of the stuff that he uses. I'll give some insight. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit about what we're doing to catch big trout in a little bit bigger water. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, and we have some beers. Oh, All right, we'll crack in a second. Let's <laughs> go, guys. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, The Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined by our buddy Callan at Callan Doctor. Yep. On Instagram, boom, nailed it. And of course, our buddy CJ at Desert Bass, and we're The Hookup Tackle USA. Today, we are talking trout and we're drinking beer because the two things should go they're hand in hand. Yeah, you I can't mean, do one without the other. Cheers. Cheers. Come pie. Cheers, CJ. You know what? What a dick. You didn't even offer CJ a beer. Cheers, oh. guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Hey, cheers. Come pie. Cheers. I feel like these beers are so fitting for this video. Well, they're fitting for every video. Look they're delicious, Orion. Beautiful. Or Orion, depending on how you pronounce it. From the wonderful world of Okinawa. Do you think anybody is new watching this? Wondering what the hell is going on. I was just holding up beers. If you are, cheers, my friends. Welcome. We are going to break down some bigger water. You know what? Hold on a second. This is so good. Yeah, this is good. It's extra good today. It's crisp. Oh. Mm. We'll pause for a minute. <laughs> Get this real close. Summertime beer. Ooh. Oh, that sounded good. It's crisp. All right, so today we are going to break down bigger water trout. Yep. Okay? So if you guys missed the video that we dropped a couple days ago, we kind of started this whole Kageki trout idea uh, with some small stream type stuff where we talk about things like great hunting baits and small lucky craft and small ima, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're not going to cover that again, even though a lot of this stuff is still applicable to bigger water. Exactly. So even if we go to a big river or a lake, you're still throwing this kind of stuff. Yeah, all the time. For sure, because it's, it's a tool. It right? is. All of this stuff is a tool. So when we're fishing small streams, there's not enough water really to use a lot of the tools that we're going to talk about. So we kind of live on these exactly. smaller trout yeah. baits. But when we get to a bigger water, it's a combination of skinny water, small water, big water, deep water. It's, it's so many different things. Exactly. Right? So let's just kind of bridge the gap. So if you guys missed it, CJ will leave a link to that video. We cover the rods, the line, the baits, all that kind of stuff. Today, we're gonna to dive into a little bit bigger stuff. Are you cool with that? Yeah. Most of the time when people think trout, they think small bait. Exactly. Right, and this yeah. is something that we've talked about and kind of laughed about a lot over the years is that trout get so pigeonholed into only eating small things. Yeah. But almost every big one I can think of or every like trout trip that I've just absolutely jacked them, it's been on full size bass stuff. A lot of the time, depending on the water, obviously. Right. right. But yeah, but it can definitely be the right tool for the right situation. They eat full size one tens. They eat full size top water. They eat spinner baits. They, I mean, I was watching you chugging a freaking gurkha knife in a river. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That normally like is like people think it's big for bass. Yeah. Right. And here you are chugging a gurkha knife. And what was the size of the first fish that ate the gurkha knife? 
about 12, 13 inch rainbow trout. Right. So, <laughs> you know, the same ideas that we apply to swim baits apply here with trout. The bigger the bait, the more drawing power it's going to have for the fish. Definitely. The advantage we have with trout is they're super aggressive. Yeah. So, especially in like moving water, like in river systems and streams, they have to be aggressive. Exactly. Because only so many things a day drift by them, right? Mm -hmm. And if they let it go, then they know that that dude back there that's in the not so good hole is gonna get it. And then that dude is gonna grow bigger and push him out. So there's a different aggression that happens. There really is. With trout and bigger baits. So that's, that's why they're so effective, right? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of our idea of just kind of shedding some light on some of the larger stuff that we use in larger water. Yeah. Sound right? Sounds good. Okay, so where's your starting point? How are you usually approaching it? What kind of bait? So my starting point would be just reading the water to begin with. So I'd wanna look, what kind of depth am I working with? What kind of current am I working with? Is there structure in the water? Stuff I need to worry about getting hung up on? And once I establish that, we'll kind of dictate where I want to start. Okay. So say we start somewhere with heavy current, I'd probably, if it's really ripping, where you wouldn't even be able to work a jerk bait, I'd want to go towards something like a spoon, like the Gurkha Some kind of metal. or Gano blade. Yeah, yeah okay. something metal that'll look good while it's getting ripped by the current and okay. put off a lot of flash so those fish will see it coming by and want to eat it because it's ripping right by them. It's loud, it's flashy. Yep. Okay. So that's where I'd want to start with current, but say we pull up, it's calm lake. I'm not worried about getting hung up on stuff. There's good depth. I'd want to pick up a jerk bait and start there. Okay. Would you say a jerk bait is your number one trout? Definitely. Yeah, okay. And it's, it's the same for me. It's, it's been this way for decades. Yeah. Right. No matter where in the country I've been fishing for trout, you can throw a jerk bait and they smash it. It's got like exactly. a year round thing. It right? is. Okay, well, let's, let's dive into jerk baits. Let's just start there, and then we'll kind of go down the line of things that we utilize in different waters. Sweet. Sound good? Okay. It's awesome that you got bit on that jerk knife. It was. Dude, the best part was it was like my second flip with it. And the whole time I was talking about throwing it, like I'd been talking about two weeks before. It was driving Andrew nuts. Yeah, that's He's true. Like, no chance you're getting bit on that stupid thing. Like second flip. And that current out. was ripping too. Yeah. Like it was moving. That's what it looks the best in, I think. All right, so I've got a pile of jerk baits. Yeah. So trout fishing isn't much different than bass fishing for me. I way overstock and I have like everything on the market <laughs> yeah, in my box. Exactly. Are you the same way? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you guys, as you get into this, you can dissect this in different ways, right? You can go down rabbit holes that will lead to other rabbit holes that will lead to other rabbit holes. And so when you really get it dissected and ironed out, you are going to find that particular jerk baits work best in this water temperature or in this amount of movement or in this amount of depth or under this lighting situation, right? Yeah. And then sometimes just making a small little switch in jerk bait will get you bit when it doesn't seem like it should make any difference. For but sure. It makes a huge difference sometimes with trout. Yeah, it really does. So let's start. What is your, I know what my starting point is for trout. Am I holding yours? Yeah. As well? Okay. So let's just start here. If you guys are a bass guy, then this is going to make, uh, this is going to be no surprise. Yeah. So the Mega Bass Edo Vision 110 has been the standard jerk bait in bass fishing for, you know, decades. The same thing goes for trout. Yeah. They absolutely smoke a 110. What other ways have you uncovered with this bait that, that you've become so intimate with it? Um, first of all, retrieval speed, that can make a big difference on the and how you're how hard you're jerking it with can make a big difference on the action of the bait okay so you can learn how to fish it really fast and make it look good and almost walk like walk the dog with it or you can slow it down and work it really slow and finesse almost just barely tapping it and you get a really different responses from the bait depending on how you fish it so okay and one thing too, I should know, I was fishing last week with some friends from Japan that came in and we were on a jerkbait bite. And when I switched them over to the 110, they went from a twitching motion to a straight retrieve. Exactly. And all of a sudden they're throwing a 110, they're whining it like a crankbait. And I said, no, 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 twitch. And they're like, no, 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 whine. Right? And it's like, it's crazy, right? Because it's so opposite of how we fish it. But depending on where you are 
and how the fish are acting and how the fish are relating, whether it's bass or trout, fish do different things in different bodies of water. Yeah. And a lot of these baits are pretty multi functional to where they can do a lot of things like what you're talking about yeah but the only way you're going to know what this bait is capable of is to use it exactly just time on the water for sure so there are certain speeds with all these baits that you could do like a straight retrieve and it's going to wind really and have this nice flash but if you go too slow it just kind of drifts and it never really does anything if you go too fast it's going to wash out and spin in circles so you kind of need to learn each bait and and where its sweet spots are and once you identify the sweet spot of this, then you know its shortcomings and you know what you need to add to exactly. your box to make up for that shortcoming. Exactly. And then you learn that shortcoming and then you know, okay, well I need to add this for this, right? And then you just start building all these little tools and all that time on the water is building in your head. And then that way, when you just randomly show up at a place, you're like, I've been here before. I know this current, I know this seam, or I know this layout, yeah. it's this bait. Mm -hmm. Right? It just, it helps you choose. At the end of the day, everybody just has to pick something to start. Exactly. Right? And it's a crapshoot. None of us know what they're going to eat, but the more time we spend and the more we learn our tools, the easier the options become and the more accurate we get by choosing the right one in yeah. the beginning. Right? Okay. So there's a 110, full size Edo Vision 110, probably the main bait if you guys are gonna start somewhere with a jerk bait, this is the one to go to. Now I also noticed that you had a 110 Junior in the pile, and we're gonna talk about colors here in a second too. So everything that we're showing you are colors that we use for trap, we're gonna do a little bit of a dive in here too. When are you switching to a Junior over the full size? Say I'm throwing the full size around, I'm not getting bit. Sometimes you'll start to think, okay, just as you were saying earlier, they're tools, so if one tool is not working for a job, you kind of scratch your head and go, all right, I'll try a different tool. Okay. So that's when I would pick up the junior. And sometimes downsizing just that little bit makes a difference for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, so you know, as much as we want to just throw the big full size stuff, you still have to pay attention to, to yeah. the feedback the fish are giving you. Exactly. Right? So it seems like, man, there's no reason they shouldn't be eating this, but if they're not, they're not. Yeah, because right. I mean, if all the fish are keyed in on small little bait or fry, yep. they're going to want a little great hunting size bait. They're not going to want the full size, you know? And and that's a good point. Like, I think sometimes trout are overly aggressive. Mm -hmm. They eat bigger shit than they should. They eat brighter shit than they should. Yeah. Sometimes they eat crazy stuff, right, mm -hmm. that makes no sense. But sometimes they're the complete opposite. Sometimes they get super honed and super picky. And so it could go either way. Yeah. So uh, adding a junior is a good option. We need to downsize a little bit. Yeah, for you. definitely. Okay, cool. There's option number one, right? So number two in the jerkbait world for you, where are you going? Let's look at those slender pointers. Slender Talk pointer. about those. Okay, here you go. I got, I got two. So two sizes, a 112 and a 97. Talk to me about the slender pointer. Just like I was talking about the 110, you can learn the secrets of this bait and mix it up and find where it can fill in the shortcomings of other baits like you were saying mm -hmm. say the one time's not working for you pick up a slender pointer throw it around figure out what looks good with it and it could be a real fish catcher for you for sure i find that the slender pointer works best when it's super shallow yeah so definitely. anytime you're fishing around grass weeds any like aquatic vegetation and it's really shallow. Slender pointer is kind of the magic bait, whether again, whether it's bass or trout, it's kind of the magic bait in that zone. It works great high in the column. It rips out of grass very easy. A lot of times you get a 110 in grass, you try to rip it yeah, out. It's a bit of a nightmare. And it just doesn't quite come off, right? And you gotta wind it in and take the stuff off. This one seems to rip out of grass really good. So if you guys are fishing lakes or ponds that get a lot of that grass that grow up uh, or river systems that have that these can be great options for you. They're not gonna get very deep, so if you need to get some real good depth to it, not the best option. But yeah. for that shallower zone, the slender pointers are money. Choosing size, how are you choosing one over the other? I really like this small one. Mm -hmm. This, uh, the 97? Yeah, 97 yep. is a sweet little bait. And I think this is awesome, especially for Arizona, because it's warm a lot of the year. So we get a lot of grass, a lot of vegetation in our water. So this is definitely a tool that's gonna make that a lot less of a burden on you when you're trying to fish. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, the 110 is definitely my go-to number one jerkbait. This is definitely my number two also. Yeah. Uh, funny story, when we first opened the hookup, we were half 
bass and half fly. Really? Okay, yeah, so we were half conventional and half fly when we first opened retail. At the time, I was sponsored by Ranger, and all those dudes there in Flippin' Arkansas were big trout guys on the White River, Yeah. right? And dude, I would just, every month, I would send boxes and boxes of Slender Pointer 97s to those guys. It was like the <laughs> number one hush-hush, best-kept secret on that river. And you know that river is notorious for having giant monsters. Grunts. Yeah, 20 yeah. pounders, right? Freaks. It's just an unbelievable jerk bait. Definitely add it into your arsenal if you guys don't have it. That's a great one. All right. Exactly. Where are you going next? I'd say the Varuna. Okay, cool. Grab that guy. Super sweet jerk bait. Just like we discussed before, it's gonna give you a different action. And I just love this bait. It's, it looks so good in the water. When you give it a hard smack, just the way the body rolls after, it just looks so good in the water. Yeah, so the Varuna is uh, from a company called OSP. If you guys are, are new to our shop, it's, a, it's one of our bigger brands that we do. Again, similar profile to a 110, a similar length, similar weight, but a different movement. Exactly. The other thing that's cool about a Varuna is you guys can get it in a suspending or a floating. Again, if you're fishing a little bit deeper water, if you're fishing still water like lakes, you're gonna wanna go with a suspending version like, like this guy. But if you're fishing shallow water, if you're fishing weeds, if you're fishing any of that, like, you know, anytime you're nervous about the dive depth, you could go with the floating version. It has the same action, but it floats. Exactly. Which is cool. Uh, there's also a spec two version that's totally silent. Sometimes you wanna have kind of a noisy bait and sometimes you wanna be more stealthy. So there's plenty of options in this in this lane, tons of colors, so that's that's a really cool one yeah. as well. Okay. I know you're a fan of this as well. So oh, talk yeah. to me about this guy. Dual Realis. They also make a great jerk bait. And really what it's coming down to here, I mean, there's a million jerk baits out mm -hmm. there on the market. It comes down to what you have confidence in and what baits you understand. Cuz if you understand how to work a bait and make it look good, you're going to get bit on it. So it really comes down to confidence, I feel like, for a lot of situations. This is a bait I have confidence in. Well, let me, let me ask you a question. You're, let's say you walk down and you're fishing a river, and let's say you've got kind of a big pool, right? Let's say you've got a, a I don't know, 50 yard pool or something, right? And you're looking at it and you're like, dude, I know there's fish in here. And you've just picked it apart with a 110 and you don't get bit. Are you saying, fuck it, let's keep going? and you move up to the next hole, or are you working back through with a different bait? I would personally want to work back through with another bait. Say I hit it with the 110, I'm like, all right, I didn't get bit, but maybe I saw a few good fish in there, like 20 inch plus fish. I'd go, all right, I know there's fish in here. A lot of the time, it's what I want to get bit on. Okay. Because what's so exciting for me about fishing is taking something wild or crazy that people go, no way you're gonna get bit on that, and going and catching fish on it, yeah. and figuring out the bait. All right, so you're, that's very Griff of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Griff. It's Griff Jr., mm -hmm. yeah. So, but that's cool, dude. I mean, that's, you know, dude, we all wanna catch the biggest fish and the most fish, that's why we're doing it. But at the end of the day, this is about having fun. Exactly. It's about having a good time. It would be great if all of us just got a fish 24 seven, but, the reality is, is that we all have, we all have lives that just turn into stress balls. No yeah. matter what, no matter how much we try to thin it down, we all have jobs and we all have families and we all have chaos and we all have stuff that happens. So that time on the water, right? That eight hours a week or 16 hours a week or however much we're all fortunate to get, it's so critical that it's fulfilling and resetting for us and that we're having fun doing it. Exactly. So if you get to have fun catching on something ridiculous, then, you know, exactly. I think it's amazing. It keeps it fun and interesting. Cause I mean, imagine you go to Lake Pleasant two days every week and you throw a drop shot for eight hours. Right, I would absolutely kill myself. By the end of the year, you'd be dreading it. Right, you, wouldn't you, would, go. you would hate it. Yeah. Well, and you see it with a lot of like bass tournament guys. You know, they fish weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend. And what happens is, you know, you get into a certain season and every lake, the fish are doing the same thing. And it's literally week after week after week after week doing the same exact thing, grinding with the same finesse presentation or grinding with the same this or the same that. You just see them start burning out. It's yeah. like they forgot they're supposed to have fun, they're supposed to experiment, but sometimes, you know, when 
when money's on the line, there's only a certain amount of time, people are afraid to think outside the box. Exactly. This is kind of the opposite of that. Yeah. We want to catch all those 20 inches you just talked about, mm -hmm. but we also want to have some fun yeah. while we're doing it. Yeah, cool. All right, let's keep going. There's only a handful more in the jerk base segment, and then we're going to move on, okay? I'm going to trade you. Kind of the last full-size guy is this guy. Got the Pointer 100 here. So another Lucky Craft jerk bait. Yep. So for me, this is like a lake bait. I pretty much almost never throw this in moving water. You, you can. You I, definitely could. Nothing wrong with it. But this is a bait that I'll throw around in a lake when I need a really loud presence, a real wide movement, something to really draw attention yeah. to them. Are you kind of fishing it the same way? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And one thing I really love about the Pointer 100 mm -hmm. is there's so many cool color offerings that you don't really see anywhere. Yeah. Like this one, for example, brook trout. Right. Like, I haven't seen any other brook trout patterns on baits. Yeah. That's and, pretty sick. And while we're on color, if it has a trout pattern in it, a trout will eat it. Oh yeah. They're freaking cannibals. And what's crazy is they could, one day you could throw your most natural presentation in there, like a ghost minnow. Yep. And they'll want nothing to do with it. And you tie on just something crazy. Like that. Like, yeah. That's like pretty, this, that's pretty crazy. Or some chartreuse bait and yeah. they'll slam it. Yeah. Like, it's just really cool to see. For sure. Yeah. So pointer 100, let me hit bar got a little bit thicker lip. It's gonna be a little bit more durable bait. It's gonna be a bait you're gonna to have to jerk a little bit harder. So it's gonna be a little less responsive in current, but in still water, when you, when you pull it, because that lip is so hard and reinforced, it forces it to move wider. So you're gonna get wider movements, louder movements. You're just gonna get a lot more action out of it, more draw power uh, for the fish. All right, we're gonna downsize a little bit. Yep. Right, so now we're kind of bridging the gap. We're not going all the way back to our small stream stuff, but these are some small baits that we throw a lot. I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna give you these two OSPs because we're both fans of these. So oh, yeah. talk to me about these two baits and when you're throwing these. So we have the Sura and Durga here. And these, just like we were talking about the 110 Junior, when you wanna downsize, these are great options to go to. And they're also good options for, you know, say you're fishing somewhere shallower, there's lots of weeds, you need to keep something up. Mm -hmm. These are great options for that as well. Yep. So I find, let me see the Durga. So I find that the Durga with that real thin lip is a super responsive one. Yeah. So I like the Durga anywhere from lake to moving water. Yeah. Because with very little resistance on your line, because that lip is so thin and so small, the smaller and thinner the lip, the easier it is for that bait to respond to a slight amount of pull. So even as this thing is drifting down the current, if I give it just a little bit of pull, it's gonna dart and move like an actual bait fish would move. All right, and then let's end with these two for the jerk bait segment. I'm gonna give you this guy and I'm gonna keep this. So talk, about, talk about that one. Got a TD minnow here from Daiwa. This is an awesome little jerk bait. This has been around for ages. Again, just something different. Yeah, just something different. I okay. mean, I loved throwing this for bass when I was younger too. Yep. And uh, it works well for trout as well, just like any other jerk bait. Yep. And just like all up the other ones and I was saying, there's just different actions for different baits. It's just another offering to fill in some gaps if okay. you want to. Yeah. Okay, the one that I have and I'm ending on is this guy. So this is a B Freeze 65 by Lucky Craft. We know it here in the USA is a Pointer 65, same thing. Pointer 65, B Free 65, same thing. In Japan, this is kind of regarded as probably the most long-term popular trout jerk bait. This is a great one for doing a hybrid of jerk and retrieve. If you're a bass guy and you're thinking jerk bait, we're always twitching it, always jerking it. In current and in moving water, a lot of times you have to almost wind it. And you have to be careful that you choose the right bait because if you choose the wrong bait, then if you do too much, it just, it rolls and it, it gets funky and the hooks wrap, right? Uh, but this is just a dynamite one when the fish get really picky on bait fish if they're feeding on little bait. This one just mimics the hatch. And when they eat this one, majority of the time when I try to use a jerk bait, it's kind of hooked on the outside of the face. When they eat this one, it's almost always just yeah. gone. Like they, you don't even see the bait. Like they know that's a real thing, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It just has such an awesome little body roll to it too. Yep. Yep. Sweet bait. So that's definitely one. If you guys are going to add a smaller downsized one, that's definitely one that I would always have on me. That's the B freezer, the Pointer 65.
All right, let's very quickly, let's fly through some colors and then we'll, we'll quickly cover some other baits. I mentioned earlier that if it has a trout pattern on it, they eat it. It could be, you know, some of this in your vision 110 in Gigi Trout OB. It could be that brook trout that we had over there, a brown trout. If it has any type of trout markings on there, they're a sucker for it. And basically the reason for that is almost every trout bait has some kind of greenish gold hue, some kind of natural hue, and then some kind of like just shocker color, whether it's a little orange, a little chartreuse, something like that. Trout really respond to that kind of tone yeah. in, in a jerk bait. So anything in a trout pattern is a great place to start. I'm gonna fly through some of these colors. I had you go and kind of choose your favorite colors, colors that are always in your arsenal. Some of these are always in my arsenal as well. Let's say you roll up and the water's relatively clear to clear and you gotta start, where you start, what's your starting point? I would start with one of these two. Okay, so something with some blue, like a pro blue. Yep. And then something natural, like a wakasagi color. Exactly. Okay, so very, again, very similar to bass. Trout love blue. Did, I don't know if you knew this or not, Trout see blue better than any color. So anything with blue, whether it's a Hasu, a Pro Blue, anything like that is always a great idea for trout. You like more of this natural kind of match the hatch type tone yeah. for trout? Well, if I'm pulling up and it's really clear water, yep. this is a great place to start. Okay. And what I think's funny is these two are just staples for bass fishing for me as well. Okay. And they translate over perfectly. Same. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Now let's go the opposite way because these next few are gonna be a little bit a little crazier. Yeah, a little crazier, right? We go from the naturals to more of like the gold tones and you're gonna see that gold is gonna become a theme in your arsenal if you're a trout fisherman. Trout freaking love gold. Oh yeah. Anything gold, anything brown, anything with that goldish green, they're suckers for it. They are. Is this just in muddy water for you or this is clear and muddy water? I've got bit in clear water with them. I've got bit in muddy water with them. Sometimes they just want certain colors. Yeah. And I've found that funny enough with these baits where you wouldn't think of throwing GP Pro Blue in dirty water. Right. But you can throw it and it gets smoked. Yeah. So it's really cool to see. Yeah. You got to have maybe a couple of different options. You know, if you're just starting out, maybe pick one natural and one gold tone. Yeah. Right. Or one trout type color and one gold tone, something like that. Something natural something a little shocker it should get you guys pointed down the right path in colors exactly all right let's jump over to some metals right you yeah. talked earlier about when you're when you pull up to a place and it's just ripping with current that sometimes you just throw a spoon or some kind of blade bait or something in yeah. there we talk about blade baits a lot in the lakes and how underutilized it is i saw you throwing this yeah all right so let's just let's talk about spoons let's talk about metals I, I brought a handful that we all throw that we can talk about just talk to me about your presentation and and what's happening with these so a lot of the time when i'm throwing metal baits and hold that up and let them see how ridiculous that is because oh, most trout fishermen if they're watching this they're going holy shit <laughs> it's right so they're fun. used to th like you know a spoon like this yeah right and now you're Cast throwing master. this ginormous <laughs> two ounce spoon or you know a big blade bait or something like this. When are you when are you throwing these and how are you throwing them? Uh, I like them for moving water, especially because just something about it when you see it in the moving water, the way like a spoon will flutter down, as it's getting ripped by the current, it just looks so good. It's still it looks it's still getting pushed and moving without you having to yeah, work it. It yeah. looks like a struggling bait fish just getting ripped by the current. And that's exactly what a big angry fish wants to see. A lot of times if you have a, a big like current seam or a big rip of of you know big push of water coming, a lot of times those big browns they'll be like under an undercut or under a log or somewhere where you have no freaking chance to ever get something to him and pull that fish out. Yeah. Whereas you can throw something obnoxious like this just outside of where he is and it's big enough. It's kind of that whole risk versus reward. Yeah. That fish is not going to leave his totally chill safe zone to right. go chase a spoon this big yeah. or a little, you know, number 18 nymph or something, yeah. right? But he gets a chance at a full blown giant meal flashing down he may take a stab at it. Exactly. And then if he stabs at it and you hook him, you've already done the hard part, which is to get him out of this get gnarly jam, yeah. right? So now you've got him and you actually have a chance to get him, in, yeah. which is dope. So in moving water, you're more of a spoon. Yeah, I think guy. it's a super underutilized bait. Yeah. I, it's just so fun too. I mean, like just flipping your spoon in there, 
and just fishing it super aggressive in that fast water. Like you see it falling, you're just whack, whack, ripping it off off the bottom. Yeah. It's just, it's so fun. Yeah. And then in still water, right? I'm a huge fan of, of a blade bait. Yeah. So you catch them on the blade as yeah. well? Yeah. So same thing, trout absolutely smoke a blade bait. This can be more of like a rip off the bottom, a yo-yo kind of thing. So where the jerk bait's gonna stay really high, this is gonna be a good way to fish on the bottom. And again, we're doing the same kind of color tone, something natural, something kind of gold or gaudy, right? These are the types of things that work good. You can go anywhere from you know, an eighth ounce to a half ounce, a lot of times people think, oh, it's trout, I'm gonna to go to that eighth ounce. And sometimes yeah. that's the right answer, right? If you're fishing really shallow. But don't be afraid to throw full-size stuff. Half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, two ounce. Yeah. What, you know what I mean? All this applies. Now, while we're on this topic, I brought this rod because a lot of times people think trout, little tiny yeah. rods, but all the same gear that we use for bass, the same stuff we're using for trout. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a 7.2 medium heavy, fast power, 16 pound fluoro. Like this is a bass rod. Yeah. But it's also a trout rod. Yeah, exactly. I mean, stuff is what you use it for. People get really closed minded and kind of stuck in their ways with, oh, that's a bass rod, that's a trout rod. When really, I mean, you can take your bass stuff to the salt water and use it. You can take it for trout and use it. You can use it for like anything as long as it's not gonna school you pretty much. Right, you know? right. But you couldn't take a bait like this and throw it on uh, a little BFS rod that exactly. you use a stream. So you have to be smart about this and you have to match the bait to the rod and whatever else you're doing. Yeah, and but, line. Yeah, but don't think that just because it's trout you need two pound. Yeah, or four that's pound. For sure. Like most of the time, the way we're fishing, trying to catch the biggest fish, you're never gonna catch a fish on two pound. Oh no, that you're gonna, just it's gonna nightmare. break you off when <laughs> it bites. This is a different level of trout fishing. This is a much more aggressive, we're going for the big one. Yeah. You've gotta have the right gear to do it, Definitely. right? Let me jump over, uh, since we just kind of finished some jerk baits too, because this is a really important topic. I'm gonna give you a couple rods that we throw a lot. Now, if you've listened to any of my jerkbait conversations in the past for bass, you will know that I am a huge proponent of casting gear for jerkbaits. I hate spinning rods for jerkbaits. 20 years ago, when casting reels sucked and you couldn't cast a jerkbait and you, you needed what a spinning rod delivered, it made sense. But now that we actually live in 2022, I mean, as yeah. long as you're not still living in 1998, reels are so sophisticated that the castability of a casting reel for jerk baits is just so much better. You can cast farther, you can cast more accurate, you have so much more control, but trout are a different species. For trout, I almost always am throwing a spinning rod. Yeah. You? For sure, okay. definitely. Here's why, and I'm curious, we haven't really talked about this, yeah. I just know that you throw a spinning, but here's why for me. Take everything that I just said about castability and accuracy and control, out of the equation. When you actually get a good trout to bite, we want to get it in the net. Yeah. <laughs> right? So what happens with a bass is when a bass eats a jerk bait, we know that a bass is only going to do so many things. Here's my jerk bait. A bass comes up and eats it. I set the hook. A bass really does two things. It shakes its head like this and it dives. Yep. Or it goes, goes up. up. Yeah. Right? It, it's really all it can do. So we know that our rod really only just has to kind of be able to absorb that kind of head shake, which is gonna be small. And then when it jumps, it might like try to shake its head, but it's gonna be controllable. Yeah. So all the movements are controllable and then it's surging. Yeah. Whereas a trout, especially in a stream or river environment where it doesn't have 60 feet of water to dive down to, it can go absolutely ape shit. They go crazy. There's can, nothing like it. It can shake, it can shake up, it can shake sideways, it can roll, it can jump. I mean, it's gonna do everything in its power to get off of that hook. It's so critical that your rod has extra give because you're gonna need it. Cause you're gonna think it's coming and it's just head shaking. And then it'll go from a head shake to a full body roll, like yeah. a freaking crocodile or something. And if you don't have that little extra responsiveness in the rod, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Right? Breaking off, pulling off something. Super critical that your rod gives enough, right? So that's why I'm a big fan of spinning. Uh, this is a rod that both of us love. This love is it. the Silver Shadow 
from Mega Bass. This is my go-to spinning rod. When I'm throwing a jerk bait, you could also do the Orochi Ronin. That's a great one. Yep. You've got the Valkyrie yep. in your hand. Six, uh, eight. The 6.8, that's a great one as well. Uh, almost always braid the leader. Always. For me, same for you. Yeah, unless it's freezing up, then you gotta go to floral. Straight floral, yep. But the braid to leader will just let you have the mobility and the cast control, which is gonna be critical in this type of situation. Yeah. Because again, if you are if you have the potential of hooking a 25 inch brown, dude, the teeth on the thing is, is so gnarly. You can't be throwing six pound. Yeah, You can't be throwing seriously. seven pound. Like I you, mean, I've been straight snipped off, like somebody took scissors from my line from a big fish. Yep. And that was on seven or eight pound. Right. So a lot of times we're throwing these jerk baits on 10 pound or 12 pound just to give ourselves enough of a shock leader to be able to withstand A, the teeth, B, maybe some of the rocks or the wood or the stuff that we're gonna be grinding so it's not just like super nicked, yeah. right? So you can't throw straight 10 pound on this. It would just be a coil disaster, yeah, that would right? Yeah, suck. So almost always some kind of braid, like a 15 pound braid to whatever leader we're yep. doing. And I'm usually like a six to eight foot leader. Yeah. Are you about the same? I like to have it as long as I can get my leader without the knot going on my spool. Okay. So I like having my knot like right there. So six to 10 feet. Yeah. Something like that. Exactly. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I just didn't want to be super contradictory to where like, wait a minute, Ben said never to use a spinning rod <laughs> yeah. for jerk baits and now they're using spinning rods for jerk baits. That's why. Mm -hmm. In this situation, it's almost, you it's almost, need almost it. mandatory yeah. to use it. Of course, if you don't have one, and throw whatever you want to throw and see for yourself what's going to happen. But when the heartbreak happens, right, when you get a big yeah. one, keep in mind, softer is better in this situation just to land more. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. A couple more things really quick that we will do in some of the bigger water. We talked about the jerk bait. We talked mm -hmm. about the metals. This is kind of bridging the gap. And this is something that's really fun to do as well. Let me hand these to you. And this is a spinner bait. There are brands like Lucky Craft makes little trout spinner baits called the Areas Feather Tuned. They're like small little compact. Jackal makes a little dare spin. OSP makes a little high pitcher. Trout love the flash. They do. Again, so this is kind of bridging that gap. If you, it's super heavy current and they're just not responding to that big spoon or that drift, a lot of times they'll come up and smoke a spinner bait. Colors were staying the same, a gold and a natural, Yeah. right? A, a gold and a, and a, and a shocker. Color. Just kind of mix it up. Try something crazy, try something natural, try something gold. But this is a great way to catch them in something that very few trout fishermen throw. Yeah. You hardly ever hear a trout guy go, oh yeah, I'm catching on a spinner bait. And it's pretty you know, funny. Spinner. Because guys will throw the spinner all day, but then they think it's ridiculous if you're throwing a spinner bait. But it's the bait. same thing. Yeah. You got it's a blade just a blades and some skirt. Like it's the same thing. It's just in a different package that they're not used to seeing exactly. and they smoke it. So don't be afraid to try a spinnerbait. It's a great way to get bit in some of that bigger trout water. And then finally on the extreme end of yep. things, and we're going to just talk about the extreme end because we're going to do another video on like smaller topwater presentations. But since we're talking about bigger water, a lot of times, like I know you do a lot of night fishing missions. Yeah. Even in, even in creeks and rivers and everything, you find that those bigger fish are a little bit more apt to kind of leave their homes and scour and hunt at night or why are, I definitely why think it's a lot easier to trick them at night. Okay. Cause the big ones are old fish. They're smart. They're not going to get fooled by something yep. dumb or that they've seen a million times. Yeah. So I like fishing at night cause it kind of gives you a new perspective on the fish. Like they're not used to seeing people at three in the morning casting at them, you know? Yeah. So, what we're about to show you is gonna seem like a little nutty, but these things actually work if you're willing to put the time yeah, in. Yeah, that's so, the thing. Let me, let me hand you some. We're just gonna hold up a few options. This is for big wake, big topwater stuff. If you wanna just go big and go for it. What's crazy about this is similar to what Callan just told you with that Gurkha knife, you know, we're throwing these to try to catch a 20 to 30 inch fish. Yeah. but you're gonna catch a 16 incher on oh, an eight inch bait. You'll catch fish the same size. They absolutely smoke it. So these are three baits that we find that work really good. I love throwing a rat, usually at night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like first thing in the morning, uh, those big browns will just cruise, rainbows as well. They'll smoke mice, they'll smoke rats. So any, any rat uh, is a great option. 
any kind of loud wake bass. This is an induced to silent blaster, which is a really cool one just because it's really loud and it can work it really slow. You've got the Nishini Abino uh, 110, which is a great one. I find that when we're talking about topwater for trout, they seem to eat things that have more of a steady pull, either a, a steady wake or a steady pull, like a prop bait, something like that, versus like a, a walking bait or a popper. They'll eat it, but not as well as something that just has a steady pull. What is yeah. your experience with topwater? So I don't have a ton of experience actually catching topwater browns. I've thrown it a lot and tried a lot. I don't know, it just comes down to me for what I want to catch them on. Okay. I, for some reason, I just have my heart set on getting a big fish on a walking bait. Okay. I'm like obsessed with it. Yeah. So, so you're more that lot. style. You don't really care if you're going to yeah. get a bit more on this. You just want to catch them on a walking bait. Yeah, I yeah. just think it would be okay. so crazazy to get that eat, working right. your bait super hard. Right. So this obviously, guys, we are way, we're taking a lot of bites away yeah. by doing this. Taking right? all the bites away. So, you know, one. if you just want to go out and try to catch every fish you can catch, stay in the jerk bait, stay in the small little spinner bait. Like that's the stuff that's going to get you yeah. the bites. This is just... Other level, something different, trying to get that big fish that maybe has seen a lot of different things and you just need to call it up. Or maybe you're fishing like a stretch of creek or whatever, it's just super gnarly. Yeah. Like if you get anything really subsurface, there's just logs and trees and grass and just stuff that you're gonna be snagging all the time. This could give you an option to stay higher in the column and work yeah. it through. So obviously you're gonna need the bigger gear. For this this is a little bit more extreme yeah but it has super high potential if you follow guys that are really true trophy hunters like in the midwest again going back to like the white river and that kind of stuff where there's lots of 15 yeah. 20 25 pound fish they smoke a rat they smoke a glide bait they smoke a swim bait so all the same things in the big bait world in bass same application yeah i mean trap. all those guys on the white river yep. i mean they're getting fish on 18 inch mice Want two foot mice. Right. Crazy. Crazy stuff. So again, same idea. The bigger the bait, the more draw power it has. It's just you gotta pick the right angle. You gotta have a little luck on your side. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of things that have to kind of fall in line, but any of these could have the potential to produce a giant in a big body of water. For sure. Yeah. Alright guys, so that is a wrap, Kellen. Thank you very much for sharing your insight. No problem. We're looking forward to uh, to more knowledge. This is gonna be fun. So Super we're gonna fun. try to come to you guys after we kind of get through travel. We're gonna try to come and try to do at least two or three things a month uh, that we'll drop that will make it trout specific because we really want you to consider diving into this. We'd love for you to experience what we experience and yeah. the joy that comes from it. So if you guys have any questions on anything we covered for myself or Callan, drop it down below and we will get to it. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Peace Thanks out my friends. Thanks for joining us. See ya. Drinking. <laughs>